What's up, Lore Masters? Hey, if you want to take lore to the next level, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you stay on top of all things lore. Today is Friday, which you guys know what that means. The community gets to choose. Hey, if you'd like to choose what I do on Fridays, definitely check out the community tab. But for today, we're going to be looking at a Lorecraft theory. War, specifically, between the Romulans versus Starfleet. It was specifically chosen to be post-Dominion War conflict, so we'll be setting the engagement to occur on Stardate 2376. This would be both before the destruction of Romulus, as well as before Voyager's arrival home with the Borg Enhancement technology. Getting down to it, in 2376, the Romulan Star Empire discovers the conspiracy outlined in the Pale Moonlight. The entire quadrant is made aware of a Starfleet Obsidian Order conspiracy to bring the Romulans into the war. This false information would lure one of the chief architects of the peace with the Dominion to a Bajoran station, and then he would be killed, and it would be pinned on the Dominion. How they got this information would forever be a mystery, but some theorize that perhaps the leadership of the Cardassian Order, the very agent himself, had let it slip due to increasing pressure on the Cardassian Union for reparations. This would take the focus off of Cardassia, for a while at least. Before we get into the battle proper, let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages between the two powers. We will also look at some of the ships they would be fielding. If you aren't interested, you can skip to the timestamp provided, but I think seeing how I'm matching up these governments would be vital to determining whether you agree with me or not. And it's a lot of work to do, so just watch the entire video. Don't be that person. When considering the advantages and disadvantages of both powers, let's take a look at the attributes. Looking at military strength, I would say that the beginning of the war would start very well for the Romulan Star Empire. Romulan forces would already be ready and prepped along the neutral zone, and strikes into Federation space could begin immediately. On the flip side, most of Starfleet's forces would be near or around Cardassia and Bajor. The bulk of the fleet would most likely have to return to the neutral zone. Not exactly a quick trip. Technologically, I would have to give the edge to Starfleet. The Romulans have cloaking technology, which they would use extensively true, but at this time, the Romulan Empire had stagnated. While Starfleet was forced to make better technology, better weapons, and ships of war, the Romulans would just rely on the classes that they currently have. Also, a conflict with the Romulans would mean the negation of the Treaty of Algeron, allowing the use of cloaking and even phase cloaking technology. The spy network would also go to the Federation. The Tal Shiar would be rebuilt by the time of this conflict, but there would still be the mole from Starfleet Intelligence. And remember, Section 31 had been preparing for a Romulan conflict during the Dominion War. From a morale standpoint, I'm going to give the edge to the Romulans, with the caveat that they are dealing with a much more dangerous Federation. Remember, Starfleet was willing to let Odo die to ensure that the Founders were not cured, not only allowing the death of an ally, but also being okay with a continued genocide of their enemy. This would make the job of Section 31 all the more easier. The populace of the Federation would also be war-weary, wanting it to end, possibly at any cost. The Romulans entered the war late and never saw combat on their own territory, nor lost any major battles. This would make them much more resilient and less likely to be, well, that war weariness I was talking about. So with those considerations in mind, let's take a look at the ships that will be fielded. Now, in theory, I know that both sides would be fielding all available classes, but I'm going to minimize this to the ships I feel would be on the front lines in the fray. Most of these were in Deep Space Nine and would be the most likely to be combat ready. For the Romulans, we have the Dedera Dex class ship, also known as a Warbird, is the frontline warship for the Romulan Star Empire. It has a maximum speed of Warp 9, which can be pushed to Warp 9.6 at severe damage to the propulsion systems. Starfleet classes the Dedera Dex as a battle cruiser. The ship is powered through a forced quantum singularity that once activated, cannot be shut down. In 2364, the ship would be considered one of the most advanced ships, not only for the Romulan Star Empire, but in the entire Alpha and Beta quadrants. During, and more importantly after, the Dominion War, the ship would lose its technological edge to other ships, such as the Sovereign and Negvar classes. The armaments of the Dedera Dex class vessel included its primary weapon, a directed energy array, located in the head of the vessel. The primary weapon could fire directed energy, disruptor arrays, and it appeared to have a torpedo launcher. The ship also included several weapons arrays along its upper neck, lower neck, and the tip of the nose. The ship could also fire phasers at different points. The ship would also be protected by a deflector shield, which created a type of force field that would surround the ship. The shield would prevent both matter and highly concentrated energy from penetrating it. While shield type can vary based on species, there was little baseline for how powerful a Dedera Dex shields were. It is thought that shields were at least evenly matched against a pre-Dominion War era galaxy class ship. 
Now, for the purposes of this scenario, I'm going to grant that the Valdor class design is available. All of the resources I've read put the ship active in 2379. However, it is possible that the ship would have been in the testing phase and usable at this point. This is me, however, being charitable given the lack of ships and options with the Romulan Star Empire. The Valdor class starship is an enhancement upon the Dideradex design. The Valdor is a large, fixed wing ship. The wingspan runs 900 meters and featured a large section forward, creating a head shape similar to the Dadera Dex. The weapons of the Valdor class ship had several forward mounted disruptor banks. Additional disruptor banks were located on the wingspan, giving the ship a full 360 arc to fire upon. There is at least one confirmed torpedo launcher at the head of the ship capable of firing up to four torpedoes at once. The ship could also be protected by a deflector shield which created a type of force field that would surround the ship. The shield would prevent both matter and highly concentrated energy from penetrating it. While shield type can vary, the Valdor would presumably have upgraded technology for the 24th century, allowing it to take hits from at least Starfleet Type 10 phasers. As stated, the Federation would be fielding its entire fleet. This would include the Acura class, Ambassador class, Centaur class, Dauntless class, Excelsior class, Intrepid class, Miranda class, Oberth class, Peregrine class, Prometheus class, Saber class, and Steamrunner class. For the purposes of this scenario, let's break down two of the ships that I believe would be on the very front line and designed specifically for this conflict. The Acura class starship was first constructed in 2371 at Utopia Planitia Fleet Yards. The Acura class was present at the Battle of Sector 001 and was one of the most prominent ships during the Dominion War. The Acura is classified as a heavy cruiser and has a top speed of warp 9.8, which it can sustain for up to 12 hours. The ship has six Type 10 phasers strategically located along its hull that allows it to fire in a 360 degree arc. Designed as a gunboat, the Acura class has upwards of 15 torpedo launchers, though only four torpedo launchers have been observed. The Acura class starship would have the most advanced shielding for the time. A Starfleet deflector shield was a type of defense which created a type of force field that would surround the ship. Deflector shields can vary, but Starfleet shields were often among the most powerful for the class they were provided upon, focusing more on the shields than armor. It would often be very hard for enemy shields to pierce Starfleet defenses as once shields dropped, most ships had little armor to defend against. The Defiant class ship was officially designated as an escort ship, though this was admitted to be a cover as Starfleet didn't want it known widely that the ship was the first warship ever designed. The ship's initial design had the sole purpose of fighting and killing Borg. The ship would find widespread use during the Dominion War, as well as separate isolated battles with elements of the Romulan Star Empire. The design had been originally shelved but was reinitiated in 2371 due to the growing Dominion threat. The armaments of the ship included four phaser cannon assemblies located in forward-facing locations. The ship would also have at least three phaser emitters, one both forward and aft, as well as one behind the bridge on the dorsal surface. The arrays were situated to allow the Defiant class to engage multiple targets simultaneously as well as to defend the rear. Additionally, the Defiant class vessel's deflector array could be retrofitted into a makeshift phaser emitter providing a one-shot capability, only to be used in extreme emergencies. The ship also boasted a total of six torpedo launchers with four forward and two aft. For defenses, the Defiant would have standard deflector shields. A Starfleet deflector shield was a type of defense which created a type of force field that would surround the ship. Deflector shields can vary, but Starfleet shields were often among the most powerful for the class they were provided upon, focusing more on the shields than armor. It would often be very hard for enemy shields to pierce Starfleet defenses as once shields dropped, most ships had little armor to defend against. We know that originally the Defiant class did not come standard with a blade of armor. Though we now have some context clues in the shows and online that would lead me to believe that it's possible that later Dominion War variant Defiant class ships would have this advantage. A blade of armor is a type of protective hull plating that possesses the capability of rapidly dissipating energy impacts from directed energy weapons. This would allow any ship with the armor to take sustained hits from energy weapons even after the shields had been completely drained. As stated, due to whatever reason, the Romulan Star Empire would become aware of the events of In the Pale Moonlight. We don't have any solid evidence of the layout of the Alpha and Beta Quadrant military assets, but it is most likely that the bulk of the Federation fleet would be located near or in Cardassian territory, as well as in the Bajoran sector. This would be to assist in rebuilding of the Cardassian Union and ensuring the Dominion would exit to the Gamma Quadrant very smoothly. The Klingon Empire would have forces in their newly acquired holdings, but the bulk of the fleet would probably have returned to the Klingon Empire. 
While keeping some presence at the Cardassian border, it is likely that the Romulan fleet would have returned to their borders as well. It is important to remember that, as of this time, all of the Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers would be weary from this horrendous war. All major powers would have taken hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of losses. While I believe that the Romulan Star Empire would bluster about removing Federation treachery from the map, both the limited Romulan resources and the war-weary attitude would make this conflict most likely a border war. Within days of the revelation of the Federation treachery, Romulan ships would scream into Federation space, causing first strike havoc all along the border. A small Romulan task force would be sent to the Klingon border to ensure defense against a possible counterattack. The Federation would be caught completely unprepared, all of their assets geared towards the Dominion War effort. The small Federation defense force would be overwhelmed and the Federation would be pushed back. Starfleet assets would be redirected from the Cardassian border, but would be hindered by Romulan ships causing hit-and-run attacks, attempting to slow them down. Having to first deal with a Romulan threat at Cardassia, many ships would have to stay behind while only a nominal amount would be able to retreat to the Federation Romulan border. The plan would be simplistic for the Romulans. Move the Federation border back, create a beachhead, and dig in. Reinforce the new front and create hit-and-run attacks throughout Federation space to keep Starfleet off base. The Romulan Star Empire wouldn't have to win the war for the Federation to lose it. They could destabilize the immediate area and demoralize the populace. A peace treaty granting more space and capitulation by the Federation would be more likely this way. At this point, we know that the Klingon Empire was in no shape to conduct any real war against the Romulan Star Empire. Additionally, the dishonorable actions of the Federation may cause some pause for elements within the Empire. However, I think ultimately the Klingons would come to the defense of the Federation. At this point, the best actions the Klingon Empire would do is conduct hit-and-run raids against the Romulan Star Empire while keeping a sizable force to prevent any incursions. The Klingon Empire would move in and out of Romulan territory. This would force the Romulan Star Empire to redirect some forces to ensure that vital points within their own territory would not be hit. As stated before, the Romulans wouldn't have to win. They would just have to cause enough damage before the bulk of Starfleet forces reach the border. What happens next? We'll take a look next week when Starfleet abandons the Treaty of Algeron, Section 31 steps in, and the Federation finds an ally in a previous war-weary enemy, next week. Now something to remember that this is just one theory of which there could be an infinite. What do you guys think? How does the scenario end? Is it reasonable? Let me know in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Wow, this is my longest episode yet. If you really enjoy my work, please consider becoming a sponsor of the channel. It's easy to do. Next live stream, hit the sponsor button. It helps out a lot and I'll probably dance for you during the live show. Whether you do that or not, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. And guys, I'm going to see you on the next Lore Reloaded.